57 years after the terrible events aboard the mining ship Nostromo, Ripley and a group of Marines investigate the planet where the Xenomorphs originated in the sci-fi action classic, Aliens. Welcome to Gutter Trash, episode 160-something, I don't know, 68, 69? 60, 68, I think. Yeah. Star Beast 2, The Reckoning. <laughs> My name is Eric. I'm Jason. <laughs> Together, we're the floor boys. <laughs> we watch <laughs> movies on the floor, and we eat there too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hello! Hey! Uh, I should, uh, eh, whatever. Y- you guys know what number this is. Yeah, I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll know what number this is after the fact. It's somewhere between 150 and 200. Right. Yeah. That's pretty much all you need to know. <laughs> and nothing, nothing, this doesn't really matter either because, like, like you were hinting at, there's a bigger exciting thing than whatever number we're on. Yeah, huh? That is true. We're alone here. Yeah, here we are. <laughs> There's no aliens crawling above us in the ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> this, uh, this is, I think, the first time that we have watched a movie without any kind of uh, noises. I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because if we're in the theater, obviously something's going wrong. Right. And uh, <laughs> if we're here, there's uh there's chatter upstairs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we did uh, we did watch one movie at my parents' house and then come here to record it. Oh yeah, which one was it? I think it was Rubber. Yeah, yeah. I think you're right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was nice. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Big uh, surround sound, oh, okay. uh, giant TV. That was awesome. No neighbors. No neighbors. Well, now we don't have neighbors here either. <laughs> so good. High five. Uh, the past week has been the most peaceful week i've had in four years that's awesome it's amazing i hope my landlord does not rent that out or if he does it's like you know a dying woman (laughs) well i was thinking of you know a very quiet person i mean mean, if you don't want him to die up there because then like everybody that they've ever met will come visit them and right yeah bringing them stuff right yeah that's true singing songs for Uh, them yeah good point good point all right, yeah, yeah. You should just run it. Oh, if like, I could. Just keep it empty. Yeah, yeah. Run, run it. If I could afford to pay twice the rent that I'm paying now to get that place and mine, I totally, you totally would. would do it. Yeah. What if uh, you did some sort of thing like, I'm, I swear I've seen this in like, you know, live action Disney movies or something, <laughs> where like, or like a Scooby Doo episode where you pretend you like you make a fake ghost or something, yeah, and, and, yeah. You, and like you spook them out every time, every time they, you know, anytime a prospective tenant comes by. If uh, if I were that clever, I would definitely try, because <laughs> uh, I don't think my landlord is going to be as discerning as I would be right. uh, over a prospective new tenant, uh, even though he uh, hated those people as much as I did. And, uh, he only did it on just pure racism. Oh, yeah. I mean, I had evidence to back up my complaints. Right. <laughs> so he just wanted, he just wanted, you know, somebody to pay. That's yeah. really his, his bottom line. Is yeah, pretty much. They can yeah. pay or not. Yep. That makes sense from his, uh, perspective, but. Yeah. It's too bad you can't have a say in the, the, the matter. I think, though, he, he completely regretted it. The, uh, you know, 
shortly after, but with all my complaining and all, and uh, right. evidence that they were just being awful people. On uh, camera? Or they never never on camera. Never on camera. Never enough other than my word all right. to get them evicted. Uh, but yeah, he, he definitely regretted having them up there. Uh, I don't know how much, I don't think we talked about this at all last week, did we? Uh, so I was, I was in a bit of a foul mood last week, so oh, I can't yeah. remember how That's conversational right. we were, but. That's right, yeah. Uh, I, I've known this has been happening, but, uh, uh, they did officially move out last, uh, uh, well, they had the, uh, U-Haul here on Saturday, and I guess, uh, they turned in the key on Monday. Uh, I had previously been told that, uh, uh, they were buying a house. Oh, yeah. Uh, which didn't make any sense to me considering that they didn't work mm-hmm. and, uh, someone else was paying their rent. That does seem odd. Yeah. Uh, it turns out that they're not buying a house. Uh, they, they're renting a house. Oh, yeah, okay. And, uh, these are the words of my landlord. Out on the west side, back where they belong. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Well, you know. I can't argue. Well, just, you're just happy that they're gone. I'm happy that yeah. they're gone. You don't but, care where uh, they moved to as long as it's nowhere near here. Right, right. Uh, but also, you know, I really can't argue that it's kind of where they belong. <laughs> oh. They're the type of people who do tend to live out on the west side of Dayton. Like just, like, you know. Ghetto, ugly. Terrible people, loud, criminal-based people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a race thing. Right. It's just a a it's class just, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I, don't yeah. know. <laughs> I have no comment. No yeah, that's comment. Right, that's right. Um, I'm glad they're gone. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I am very like glad I said, they're gone. I, I went to bed early the other night, just because I could. <laughs> no hammering? Like, no hammering, no, 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 uh, no... glass breaking? No, no. No water dripping from your ceiling? <laughs> nope. <laughs> uh, I guess my landlord finally did go up there to, to take out the state of the apartments. He said it's actually in better condition than he expected. Right. Uh, and I will say that I had to go up there once to uh, tell them to move a car. And, uh, when they opened the door, like, you know, it was, uh, cool out, uh, when, when, uh, when that happened. So I was wearing a coat. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they opened the door and just the waft of heat that came out from the inside of there. And just the overabundant smell of stale cigarettes. Oh. Uh, it just, it knocked me on my ass. Right. For, for, and I was still outside, <laughs> you know. So they were just, Pumping the heat, yep. smoking cigarettes all yep. day. Yeah, their heater had been running since, you know, September. <laughs> and, uh, it hasn't been a cold winter. Right. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, not at all. <laughs> yeah, like, this week is probably the coldest week we've had. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah, man, it's just, uh, but I guess, uh, he did say that, uh, there are holes in the wall that, uh, are there without any kind of explanation. Fist sized holes. Possibly. Head sized holes. <laughs> Baseball bat sized holes. You know. <laughs> Who bullet bullet sized hole. Maybe. <laughs> uh I only heard a gunshot once, I thought. Oh, that's pretty good. But it could have been a car backfiring, so I'm not entirely sure. But mm. you know. <laughs> they were uh loud, annoying people. Yes, they were. I'm very happy for you. And like, you know, I even feel a little more comfortable, but I can only imagine how you feel. <laughs> <clears throat> it's pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, uh, I'm in a better mood this week. Yeah. yeah. Uh, even though my, my mood last week wasn't because of that at all, but uh it, it, overall, it has just been more pleasant here. Oh, yeah. 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 Wow. So, do you have any idea when he's going to have a new person move in? Do you? I have no idea. So, you might have a couple weeks or something. Maybe, yeah. Uh, I think he did say that some stuff needs to be fixed up there, so, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, That's cool. It's yeah. very cool. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, we're going to talk about a movie, I guess. Oh, yeah, we watched a movie. Yeah, Star Beast 2, The Reckoning. <laughs> 
Was it going to be called The Reckoning? No. Okay. Because I like that. <laughs> I like that. It's pretty good. Uh, so we watched Aliens. Follow up to my last movie pick, which was Alien. It's the sequel. With more more than one alien. More than one alien. Yeah. They pluralized them. Yep. And uh, there were a lot. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of aliens. Uh, so yeah. I think... Uh, from what I recall from our review of the, the first movie, mm-hmm. uh, that, uh, while I had some problems with it, I still really liked it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought, uh, it was still incredibly good, and most of my problems were just sort of logic slash editing based. And, uh, what's her name? And, based? Yeah, yeah. Veronica Cartwright. I started to say Victoria Jackson. <laughs> she probably actually would have maybe been slightly better. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Uh,. <laughs> So, so this movie, Aliens, James Cameron. 1986-ish. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, the first one was kind of more of a suspense thriller, and this one is kind of more just like an, a sci-fi action movie. Yeah. So it's completely... It's different. Different. It's yeah. very different. I wouldn't say completely different. Well, they both got your Ripley's and your Aliens. Yeah. And then there are some of those, uh, claustrophobic, uh, you know, being chased by or chasing down in alien scenes. Right. Uh, there's even uh, a point, uh, not directly at the beginning, but beginning-ish, uh, where he, it seems like he, um, Cameron almost tries to recreate that uh, opening scene. Yeah, of alien. yeah definitely. The, the quiet, uh, everybody waking up from the cryo sleep. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like they even, there's even the the same music cue, yeah. and instead of like in the first one, you see this old uh, whatever they call those birds that are filled with water that oh, slowly yeah, yeah. dip. Instead of that, there's like one of these uh, I don't know, sciencey spinny kind oh, of things, yeah, yeah. like perpetual motion right. things. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and there's like the same music cue from the first one, and it has that slow pan. I think yeah, you're right. I think it's like an homage. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and come out and say this. Oh? I did not enjoy this movie at all. What? The aliens? Yep. No, you're just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the movie is amazing. Mm, the movie is boring. You're crazy. Mm, nope. I mean, it takes it like half an hour to start the act. It took an hour and a half. <laughs> well, this was the extended cut. Uh, still. Um, <laughs> wow. Cause really? I, I kept looking at the, uh, the little timer clock ticking away. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that. Yep. You mean just because of the, you thought it was slow moving? Uh, not just because of that. Mm-hmm. That didn't help any. Yeah. Uh, man, there is so much about this movie I did not enjoy. That's crazy to me. I love this movie. I'd, I'd say it's in my top five favorite action movies of all time. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's, let's hear them. Rattle them off, sir. <laughs> oh. I think. Maybe you were thrown off from the lack of babies crying and hammering from above your head. You're like. You're like I don't I can't enjoy a movie without that. You're gonna call your landlord up and like get him back. I can't enjoy anything. <laughs> I, you joke, but I will say like on Monday, it was like the the first day that like you know I I knew they weren't there. Right. And uh, I was a little put off by the fact that uh, it was so quiet <laughs> that it was so enjoyable. Yeah, and peaceful. Like I could. Like, I was in here working, because uh, cause my computer is dying, folks. Right. And I am in a mad dash to try to save everything that I can before it completely crashes on me. Uh, yeah, that sucks. So I'm sitting in here, and I'm working in silence because I can't play music, because that is uh, part of the thing that is uh, dying quickly first. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I'm just hearing, like, the building settling. <laughs> <laughs> and it's freaking me out. <laughs> Aww. And it, uh, for a split second, I did kind of miss the cacophony that existed <laughs> above me for so many years. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's like when people move from the city to the country. You're right. Uh, they have trouble sleeping sometimes yep. because it's so quiet out there. I did have trouble sleeping that first night. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> you, you miss them. You know, Valentine's <laughs> Day's coming up. You should send them a car. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. I, I got used to it real quick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, 
No, I um, I am gonna say that probably one of the reasons that I did not enjoy this movie is because. I have seen so many other things exactly like it since. Uh huh. Alright. Uh, and I am also putting it into that sort of class of movie that, uh, I think ruined everything. Uh, <laughs> because it raised the bar? Or? Um, not so much raised the bar, but as, uh, you know, just sort of did something, and then everything else copied it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, especially, like, you know, and with stuff that I like, you know, comic books and, and video games and, and uh, you know, sci-fi to an extent. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think this, uh, Tron and The Matrix ruined all entertainment. <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> the, uh, the Neutron? Uh, Oldtron. Oldtron. Neutron. Yeah. Neutron. <laughs> the Neutron dance didn't ruin anything. Uh, that's true. That's uh, a great, great cut. Yeah. Great cut. Uh, no, it, uh, the Neutron is just sort of, uh, that's like a snake eating its own tail. Yeah. <laughs> you mean it's deep and poetic and Buddhist? Uh, no, it is, uh, just, uh, munching on the shit that came before it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I know exactly what I mean about the Matrix, because, I mean, I've seen a ton of movies that instantly aped yeah. so much, so yeah. many aspects of that, of that film. And, um, uh, and I think that, uh, this movie did too, and I think Tron did as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, particularly as far as aesthetics and design and plot go. Uh, I mean, how many other countless things have we now seen space marines being badass in? You know? Right, yeah. Um, there doesn't even need to be in space, you know, it's just, uh, marines, you know, that sort of thing. And, uh, but again, particularly in comics, you know, like, it seems like after this, after, after, after Tron and after this, uh, it definitely seemed like comic books, uh, you know, Every character now has light up weird clothes or they just pack themselves full of, uh, shitty gear. Uh, <laughs> much like those two movies. Right. I, I just love, I don't know, I love this movie though. Um, I mean, I love the whole Aliens, like, series. Like, it's one of my favorite series ever. But, I, I mean, first of all, I love how different it is from the first one. Like, I didn't just, like, you know, beat the same thing into the ground. I will, you know, give them kudos to that, you know, because, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't think you can, I don't think you can make a second of that movie. Yeah. And so, you know, yeah, more, uh, more power to them for trying to do something different. Right. Uh, but man, it did not hold up, is what I'm going to say. Really? I don't think it, uh, aged well at all. Oh man. See, I disagree. I, I think it, I think it's as, like, I'm, I'm sure I saw it when I was 11, like, as soon as it was on DVD, or, not DVD, but v- VHS. VHS. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I love it just as much today as I did the first time I watched it. I don't know. I've, I'm, see, I'm sure I've seen it dozens of times and I've never, ever gotten, like, sick of it or anything. Right. But, I mean, it's possible it's part nostalgia, I guess, but. I'm gonna say it is, yeah. But I, I just love all the characters and, like, you know, just how, how much personality, like, Hudson and Hicks and Apone and all those, and Vasquez have. Uh, I just, I saw all just a bunch of cliches. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> they and, originated the cliché. And, uh, some horribly acted cliches at that. Most of them are good. Most of them are good actors. Michael Bean's okay. That's yeah. pretty much it. Which one's Michael Bean? Uh, Hicks. Hicks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Michael Bean, who apparently, uh, has, uh, made his entire career off, uh, out of, uh, Falling for manly ladies in '80s movies, <laughs> <laughs> and and James Cameron did '80s movies too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, you didn't like uh, uh, Paxton, Bill Paxton in this movie? No, he was hilarious. He was terrible. Oh, <laughs> uh, he, was, yeah. he was the relief that he relieved all that tension. Not really. Spunkmeyer, <laughs> come on, Spunkmeyer. Just the name alone. Yeah, because that's all he was, he was des- that name. He deserved an Oscar just for that name. 
Why? There's cookies named after that. <laughs> pay pay homage to the cookies Man. before you pay homage to that guy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, yeah, I love I loved it though. I I thought it to me it holds up. I mean, it's just a fun action movie with like I think it has an awesome set design and like awesome like atmosphere and like 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 that shaky stuff in the when the uh the ship is falling and like it I don't know, it just kinda of pulls me in. Um uh, I think if I had seen this twenty years ago I probably would be with you. Yeah. But yeah. because I have seen everything else since that basically cannibalized this movie, uh this movie doesn't do anything for me. Right. No, I uh, I totally get that. Especially James Cameron himself. Yeah. Uh, I think I think I would have enjoyed this movie more had I not ever seen Avatar. Yeah, there's a there's a few similarities. There's a hundred similarities. <laughs> he likes to. I wonder if he is as really as like, you know, if he has the you know his morals uh, so solidified like that, or if he just thinks it weaves into his story well, because his movies always have some sort of like pseudo hippie morals, you know, like right. like. You know, leave it alone, man. That that sort of stuff. Um, this one, this one seems to have a, like maybe a more dominant like mother theme, like you know, right. mother and child kind of thing. Because um, there's just stuff with Ripley's daughter and a Newt and Mother Earth, and, right. like, all that kind of stuff. But and the Queen, right? Yeah, yeah. I I think he could have beaten that over our heads a few more times, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like there's actually a scene where I think it's I forget if it's at the be- I think it's at the beginning where uh, like Ripley's face is taken up like half the screen and it like kind of melds into a shot of the Earth with the same exact like curvature of her face right. and it's like a very like Mother Earth she's the Mother Earth in this yeah, movie yeah, yeah. kind of thing so I don't know if he's like kind of a hippie or if he just like likes to put morals like because clearly Avatar like it was like yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm guessing he's kind of hippie-ish. All right. Uh, ironically, very anti-corporate. Yeah. Uh, considering that uh, his movies are like the most corporate movies ever. <laughs> but the bad guys are always the giant corporations. Right. Yeah. Maybe he's got a Cyberdyne Industries. Yeah. Wayla Nutani. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever the fuck the bad guys in uh, Avatar were. Other uh, than Space Marines. Space Marines. <laughs> yeah. With exosuits. And Sigourney Weavers. And Sigourney Weavers. <laughs> uh, I didn't like the fact that there was a kid in this movie. Really? I think you throw a kid into any movie, it automatically uh, gets cut down a few notches. E.T.? Yeah. <laughs> that would have been better with grown-ups. Yeah, it would have. It would have. <laughs> On bicycles? They yeah. would have had, had fixed gears and like... <laughs> Maybe they would have just had cars. Yeah. Oh, wow. Man, we make that shit with Mustangs and... Wow. Some Lamborghinis. That's the extent of my car knowledge right there. Obviously, kids' movies are, are fine with kids, right. but uh, what is clearly uh, an adult-oriented action movie should not have kids in it. Right. <clears throat> I liked her. I thought she was good. Oh, annoying. That scream is amazing. It's like Mariah Carey's whistle scream. Uh, we went out to dinner Friday night, uh, you, me, and uh, your your girlfriend. Uh-huh. And uh, while you went to the bathroom, she spotted one of her friends. Uh, her friend <laughs> made sort of this uh, ear-piercing, high-pitched squeal upon sight of Kathleen All right. uh, that uh, I think damaged my eardrums. Uh, internally. That's what that was. I was in the bathroom. I thought the fire alarm went off or something. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, that was your girlfriend's friend. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, that was a lot like Newt's scream in this movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although she did it like 17 times. The, uh, Newt. Yeah, Newt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah pretty much any time an alien was, you know. Yeah. And, yeah, just, I don't know. I don't, I don't like kids' movies. <laughs> I don't like kids in action movies. I didn't mind. I didn't mind at all. It's just easy target. Even Goonies? How about the Goonies? The Goonies is a kid's movie. Oh, they they say uh, dirty words and refer to penises. Yeah, that's fine. It's still a kid's movie. Oh, okay. Yeah. If your movie is deliberately about kids, uh, the Goonies, Attack the Block, uh, Monster Squad, 
it, that's all fine. Mm-hmm. But uh, if you're, uh, you know, making an R-rated film with Sigourney Weaver fighting, you know, monsters, then uh, n- no kids. No kids. <laughs> Don't need them. There was uh, less of Newt in the... Uh and the other version, we watched the one that was slightly longer. Right. Like, uh, I know the only one I, the only scene I remember for sure that's not in the theatrical is, um, towards the beginning when Newt's family is, is riding along and they discover, um, the uh, space jockey ship. Yeah. Yeah. yeah basically, because in the other version, the first time you see Newt is, you know, when the Marines see Newt. So. Maybe I would have liked that better, but. I, I think I like that better. Like, it was. I mean, like, I like that scene. Like, I think it's, like, a well-done scene. Like, it's kind of scary, and, you know, it shows her family. But I think it kind of works better without that, actually. Yeah. I don't know what else they cut out of it, but that's the only one I really noticed. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, I don't know for sure, but, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. She was still, every time she was present, was... uh. <laughs> distracting and annoying to me. Right. Uh, the only part of it is, uh, you know, it is one of those movies that's so well ingrained that I knew a ton about it. Right. Yeah. I mean, you've seen the one that comes right after, so you know which three characters are in the next one. Right. And then I know that, uh, you know, uh, you know, I knew Paul Reiser was, uh, you know, a sleazy bad guy, you know, before the reveal. Right. You know. But then again, he's Paul Reiser. How can he not? <laughs> he's also hilarious in this movie. Yeah, wasn't he? No. <laughs> of course, he's not hilarious as a comedian either. I, I thought he was good in this movie. Yeah, he's fine. Like he played yeah. a good sleazeball. Uh, uh, yeah, he wasn't... Like, yeah, he didn't really have any funny lines. Uh, but. Yeah. Hey, I mean, he did, a, he did a fine job in this movie. Uh, but... Uh, uh, yeah, I think, cause I think, like, uh, I listened to an interview with him on, uh, on a podcast, uh, some time ago, where he said he played the role, you know, where he was trying to play it sympathetic at first, and so that way, when it's revealed towards the end that he's, you know, a dick. Right. That, uh, you know, it's, it's somewhat of a surprise. Yeah. Uh, he did a, an okay job doing that. Yeah. I guess, yeah. yeah. I, I agree. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, anytime anyone wears a popped collar, uh, I'm already gonna distrust that guy. It's foreshadowing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, or as, as my, uh, my one, one, one time friend, oh, what the fuck was his name? Uh, <laughs> I can't believe it. He must have been really close. Yeah, we were, yeah. yeah. Doogie. No. <laughs> Um, oh, sh- I can't believe I don't remember his name. But he, he calls it the activated collar when, this, when the collar is activated. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was pretty cool, pretty good, pretty good use of the uh, the word activation. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Craziness. Craziness. <laughs> I love this movie. Not nowhere near as much as Alien, but I do love it. Yeah. I do love it. It's my. I guess it's my. Uh, I guess it's my favorite James Cameron movie because I love The Abyss and I love Terminator Two as well. Yeah. But. But, uh, Terminator also, or Terminator 2 Termin- Judgment Day? Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Right. Like, Terminator 1, like, I think it's fine, but, uh, to me, that one's pretty boring, and, like, that one doesn't hold up, like, special effects wise, but, right. but I watched the second one just a couple months ago, and I think it's as good as when I watched it in the theater with my Guns N' Roses t shirt on. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't know what you're wearing has anything to do with it, but, <laughs> but, you know. I probably went to see that movie just because I heard uh, the Guns N' Roses song in the trailer. Oh, okay. you know? <clears throat> so, he, he, so you went to see that movie and not have seen uh, the first one? Uh, I th- I'm sure I saw it when I was a kid. Right. Yeah, but I mean, it wasn't one of my favorites or anything. Terminator was <laughs> one of my favorite movies as a kid. Yeah, uh, My mom had it on tape, and one summer I watched it uh, nearly every day. Really? Yep. Wow. Yep. That's a lot of terminated. That is a lot of terminated. Uh, I haven't seen it in a very long time, so I don't know if it'll hold up or not. Right. But I'm pretty sure that, you know, it has the, the 80s aesthetic that would probably turn me off. It does, yeah. And, uh, I think that this movie has that too. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, even though it's supposed to be in the far future. Well, know? don't they... They refer to a date at one point in the movie, and it was like 6-14-79. I honestly don't know. Is that when the original Alien came out? I don't know. Because he says something to Ripley about... like I, I can't remember if it's the date that they discovered her floating in space. Right. Or... Um, you know, or what he was referring to, I forget, but right. he says that, that date somewhere in, in this movie. Right. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I do kind of like that, uh, the movie picked up 57 years after the original. Yeah. There. Uh, gives it, uh, a little bit of, of gravitas, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, everybody, um, other than you has probably seen this movie. Right. So we don't need to, like, say, like, what yeah. it's about, right? Yeah, okay. probably not. Yeah. People know. It's about aliens. Yeah. And Marines. Right. And Ripley. Yeah. And an annoying girl instead of an awesome cat. Well, they have to leave the cat behind. Well, yeah. He doesn't deserve that much trauma. No, of course not. Once every 57 years is all Jonesy can handle. Yeah. <laughs> but really, Newt is just Jonesy, but with uh, an annoying scream. Mm. Wow, yeah. <laughs> she kind of is. <laughs> Well, Jonesy wouldn't have known how to maneuver through the air shaft. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another thing that I didn't like about this movie uh, was that, uh, and I guess you could call it, you know, good filmmaking that he does this, but I think an exceptional filmmaker wouldn't have let you know that he was doing this. Oh. But James Cameron telescopes this shit out at you. Uh, but like, you know, like the thing with the, the exosuit. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, how Ripley uses it at the beginning. You just know, like, even if I didn't know already, right. like, you know, from that, I was like, oh, that is gonna play a major role at the end of this movie, probably. Right. Uh. But I mean, you know, if she would have just hopped in that suit later. Well, right, yeah. But it been weird. again, uh, it's one of those things I think a good filmmaker would have, uh, more subtly done it. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, would have introduced that idea in a better old fashion. Right. Um, uh, there was another thing where, uh, the first time they run into Newt in the, uh, the, in the colony, uh, and Ripley chases her down into her, her hidey hole. Right. And, uh, they see that weird turbine thing. Yeah. And, like, Cameron, like, focuses the camera on that for, like, ten seconds. To show us this spinny, turny <laughs> turbine. And uh, lo and behold, later on in the movie, something terrible happens with it. <laughs> I, well, I thought that was less foreshadowing and just more like uh, Ripley becoming aware of the room, like why like why Newt chose that room, because like the aliens wouldn't have been able to crawl through that because it's so you know tight. And, right. But then there's still enough air coming in. Like, I thought that was more of like a letting you know... Like yeah, a, maybe if he hadn't have gone back and used the damn turbine right, during right, right. the movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can see. I can see. Man, you ruined this movie for me. Now uh, I hate it too. Sorry. No, no, no. I love it. I think it's. I think it's awesome. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I'm. Uh, I can totally understand why people would love this movie. I just didn't. Yeah. Yeah. What'd you think of uh, uh, Bishop? Lance Hendrickson. Oh, uh, I always like Lance yeah, Hendrickson. Yeah, I thought he was great in this yeah. movie. He is the uh, the rich man Stephen McCaddy. <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> He's the poor man's Lance Hendrickson. Oh, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't consort with poor people, so I don't know what they like. <laughs> you listeners probably know our demographic is tragically poor. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> We just had a, we just had some studies then. <laughs> um, yeah, I think Lance Henderson was awesome because they kind of give some false foreshadowing with him. Like yeah. he's creepy and weird, and right. like especially after you know the the, the knife s- thing. Yeah, the knife thing. He's like kind of got this penchant for uh, weapons, and uh, and then you know after uh, Ian Ian uh, in the most role yeah. in the first one, you, you just kind of watch them funny anyway. Right. But he turns out to be a pretty stand-up dude. Yeah, he well, robot. Yeah. Yeah. Synthetic human, whatever <laughs> right. what does he prefer to be called. <laughs> I like that kind of future humor where, you know, like, you know, the androids have uh, PC names for themselves. And, right. and like, I like stuff like that. That's, that's 
That's always been one of my favorite quirky like parts of this movie. Fair. Like the social commentary, sci-fi elements. Fair. Uh, yeah, I just uh, I just like Lance Hendrickson. I yeah. watch that guy in anyway. <laughs> Uh, even terrible, terrible shit. Like man's best friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, uh, like after the knife scene, uh, cause I was already, uh, I mean, I, yeah, but at that point, like, uh, we were three hours into the movie. <laughs> Aww. And, uh, uh, so still early on, uh, <laughs> it, uh, it really made me want to watch Near Dark. Oh, yeah? Yeah. He is so awesome in Near Dark. And guess what? Bill Paxton is, too. Yeah. What the fuck happened? <laughs> <laughs> isn't, uh, isn't there, isn't there, like, oh, yeah, uh, isn't Vasquez, isn't she the wife in Near Dark, too? I don't know. I'm pretty sure she is. I think it's got three or four of the same actors. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I don't know who played the wife or whatever, but uh, I know Paxton and Hendrickson are in it. Yeah. And uh, Paxton's great in that movie. Oh yeah. Uh, Lance ah. is excellent in this movie. Uh, what I'm saying is, uh, go watch Near Dark if you haven't. <laughs> that's an amazing, it's, yeah. that's probably the oh, that's best an, vampire movie. Probably. Wasn't, uh, wasn't that, uh, James Cameron's ex-wife? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Oscar winner. Catherine uh, Bigelow. Catherine Bigelow. Yeah. 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 Also directed, uh, Point Break, another one of my favorite films. Yeah. <laughs> That's an unfortunate misstep in her career. Uh, oh, that's a good movie. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, it's possibly the only movie that has Anthony Kiedis and Patrick Swayze in the same film. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, what's his name? Nice, uh, what's that guy's name? Keanu Reeves. No, the yeah, uh, he plays the undercover cop in Point Break. Uh, uh Keanu Reeves. <laughs> yeah, that guy. No, he was uh oh, Gary Busey. He was Scagnetti in Natural Born Killers. Uh, Tom something. Uh, Gary Busey. <laughs> Not Gary Busey. Was he in Point Break? Yeah. Yeah, oh, so yeah. yeah. Tom something or other. Sizemore. Sizemore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's great in Point Break too. I don't remember him in Point Break. I must have slept through that part. He had a real small role, but yeah. he was he was awesome. Also, when I saw it, I probably had no idea who the fuck he was anyway. So, uh, I probably didn't the first twelve times I watched it, but the last forty-seven <laughs> times I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but uh, there's a there is a funny thing in the uh, like deleted or not deleted scenes, but like the behind the scenes. Stuff in, in this movie yeah. um, that I was going to tell you about. Veronica Cotterade actually smacks uh, Sigourney <laughs> Weaver in the face. How do you know? Yeah, she just walks on the set and they're like, "You're not even in this film." And <laughs> she just slaps her and walk, walks up. No, uh, the scene at the end where spoiler uh, Bishop the uh, Lance Henderson's synthetic humanoid character gets right. ripped in half by the Queen Alien. Yeah, um, it's it's pretty funny because when she rips him in half in such a way that you know, like his upper. You know, his torso upwards goes one direction and his torso down goes the other direction. Right. And, uh, and they said, you know, because they still had him acting in the scene after that. Right. So they had to, they, they had to throw his torso and, and head in such a way, like the, you know, the fake Lance Hendrickson that it, that it landed, you know, in a position where they could still, you know, like have him do stuff. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and there's this, they 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 t- end up tossing it like dozens of times and like and like it's one of those things where like you just see them toss it and they cut and they sh- see them toss it again and right. it's like toss after toss and they're just like tossing this milky uh legless <laughs> robot like dozens of times and he's just laying in all these weird positions and like you can tell everyone there's like oh it's like it's like a bad golf shot or something <laughs> Like he just like lands face down, or like he just scoots a little out of frame, or you know. But they they had to do it so many times. It was it was cracking me up. That's that's like a extra worth watching. Right. If you, yeah. if you, right. <laughs> Sounds humorous. Yeah. Well, I can't understand why they wouldn't just like show the tearing and the tossing and then cut. Right. Yeah. Well, I think it made it a little more believable that you see him like slide into the position, yeah. and then immediately like they cut to like him, his like eyes opening up, and yeah. and then you see him in that position again. So, like, it's made it added a little believability to him being a robot. I sorry, synthetic human. <laughs> <laughs> I do know that uh, Lance Hendrickson's uh, autobiography is called uh, Not Bad for a Human. Really? Yeah. Really? 
I had no idea that he wrote an autobiography. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, uh, it's, I think it came out over the summer. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I've been interested in reading it, but, oh. uh, I haven't gotten around to it. He seems like the type of guy that would have some industry stories worth reading. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's been in so many things. And, and like, colorful things, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, like, if Kirsten Dunst wrote one, I might be like, eh. Yeah, yeah. yeah who cares? Yeah. <laughs> or, or, you know, or, you know, I don't know. I don't know, I started to say even, like, Johnny Depp or Brad Pitt, who I really, really like, but... Right. But even still, like, I mean, they're such yeah. A-listers that right. they, everything is catered to them. Exactly. And Lance Henriksen is, like, a working dude actor. Oh, yeah. and I would read, like, if Harry Dean Stanton or right, right, Gary yeah. Busey wrote an autobiography. <clears throat> oh, I would kill to read a Gary Busey <laughs> autobiography. You know, just it would just be a gibberish. <laughs> it would make no sense exactly. at all. Yeah. It would be like reading Finnegan's Wake. <laughs> Yeah, like, uh, I mean, Harrison's been in everything from, he was in Dog Day Afternoon, you know, he was in this movie, oh, yeah. and then he was in shit like, you know, like, Man's Best Friend, yeah. and Pumpkinhead, and, <laughs> and then he was in, like, Millennium. TV yeah, show. yeah, yeah. He was really good in that, too. Yeah. yeah, he's awesome. Awesome guy. Hmm. Well, yeah. We should read that. Yeah? That's, that's my next pick. Alright. We're gonna read <laughs> Not Bad for Humans. <laughs> I think the guy who helped write him that is actually writing a comic. Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, With so, Lance Hendrickson. Really? Yeah, I think wow. so. I, I think I read that somewhere. Nice. I'll check that out. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah so aliens. So you aliens. Just, have you seen all the alien movies now? Uh, the only one I haven't seen at this point is the fourth one. Oh, the Resurrection. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Um. Definitely not a missed classic. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I may watch that one on my own. All right. And uh I may revisit three since like I haven't seen that one since it came out on VHS. Okay. Uh and I know people are saying like the fourth one is like an incoherent mess and it's not good and I know it was the only uh wow. uh, that French guy that Pierre Genet. Yeah, his uh, his only Hollywood movie. Right. Uh then he was so disillusioned with it that he has never made another one since. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's some scenes and some elements of Alien Resurrection that are amazing. Yeah. And then there's the other 80% of it. Uh, <laughs> but it's it's worth watching just because there's some visually astounding parts. Right. And, like, there's an underwater scene that's just beautiful. And then, like, the, the alien monsters are just, like, almost comical. They They almost look like like an, like a Peter Jackson kind of thing from, like, Dead Alive or something. Really? Yeah, they're... they're they're not serious looking. It looks like a guar thing or something. Wow. It's bizarre. Huh. But, um, but yeah, it was kind of fun and pretty, but yeah. not a good movie, though. Yeah. Eh, I'll give it a shot. Mm. But yeah, that's not anything I would pick for Forget a Trash, and I'll probably never pick three either. Yeah, so I'll probably just watch them on my own. Right. At some point. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I was just uh, probably just more disappointed than anything else yeah. uh, while watching this movie. It, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it's probably, like, one of those things if, yeah, you've went 25 years without watching it. Right. It's never going to be, you know, live up to the hype and live up to right. the the uh, the things that were inspired by it, probably. Right. But the first one did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I enjoyed the hell out of the first one. Right. Uh, you know, like I said, despite the problems that I had with it, like, all of those were just simply storytelling things, I think. Yeah. Uh, this one, I don't think, held up the same way. It's not as timeless, I think. Huh. Well, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I'm obviously in your corner on that point, because right, right. I fucking love the first one so much, but I think they're both great. Like, right. they're both they're both movies I could watch forever. I also think uh, it seems to be the, the recurring theme behind our missed classics, you know, my missed classics, mm-hmm. is that... Uh, Never seems to live up to to what you uh, hear about it. So, right. Yeah. Maybe you should watch a movie that you've always heard is t- like. Have you ever seen Ishtar? I have seen Ishtar. <laughs> okay. Have a copy of Ishtar. Yeah. Maybe fucking pick Ishtar next time. <laughs> I've never seen it. It's Miss Classics would be Jason's Miss yeah. Classics too. Yeah. Well, you know, I I do have several Miss Classics. I'm yeah, sure. yeah. I'm sure there's a dozen movies that people freak out when they hear that I haven't heard. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um. But yeah. <laughs> Hmm. It's possible. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. Maybe I should find some some uh, uh, some movies that people generally dislike and uh, see if they're they're good or not. See so if you know. can find the uh, 
the shining light in there. Yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah, is there old movies that are, I mean, besides like Ed Wood, where people just kind of make fun of them? Right. Uh, uh, I mean, I've always heard Ishtar jokes. Right. And, I mean, it, uh, it has been absolutely, probably when that came out on VHS was the last time I saw that movie, which was like 80 something, wow. 88, 87. Yeah. yeah. And I remember my parents and I watching it and loving it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I think that's one of those movies that gets a bad rap. Yeah. Uh, but again, I haven't, uh, haven't revisited since. It took me forever to find a copy of it on DVD anyway. Mm-hmm. And I just haven't had time to sit down and rewatch it, so. We should watch all the Leprechaun movies. <laughs> I haven't seen those. Oh. Yeah. I remember the first one being really, actually, fun. Right. And I remember the second one being like, Watching a really horrible, like, TV show horror thing. Right. And then I don't think I saw it anymore after that. I saw, like, 20 minutes of the fourth one, which is, I believe, the one that he's in space. <laughs> See, Leprechaun in the Hood and Leprechaun in Space, they seem like they tried to be fun, at least. Right, yeah. Uh, but uh, it was still pretty terrible. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Uh... <laughs> Hey, you know, uh, Warwick Davis is only, like, in his mid-40s? That's crazy. Yeah. Wasn't... He what? was in Return of the Jedi. 1983? Yeah. How old was he then? He was, like, 10 when he was an Ewok. Are you serious? Yeah. I thought he was, like, 25. Uh, no. He was only, like, 18 when he did Willow. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Go Warwick. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, I always thought he was a little bit older than that. I did as well. So, is he still acting? Is he oh, still, yeah, he still does uh, stuff. Yeah. Wow. Anytime you need a, a British midget or uh, somebody in a suit, uh, he's the guy you call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd need both those things. <laughs> Constantly. You can't fuck him. I don't want to fuck him. <laughs> I, sir. How dare you, sir. Ah. <laughs> uh. So, yeah, uh, I don't know anything else you want to try to get me to change my mind about uh, the aliens here. Did, did you understand, like, there's this one scene that when Doogie and I are lying around watching alien movies in our underwear at night, uh, there's a scene that we always kind of look at each other like, I, don't, I still don't get it. Like, in this movie, when, uh, you know, Apone is, uh, is yelling at Hudson, one of the many times he's yelling at Hudson, right. and he goes, he, he, like, pulls his eye down and he goes, look into my eye. Yeah, I didn't get that at all. I was like, yeah. is he, cause I mean, he uses his middle finger to pull down his eye, but he also has his other finger standing up straight too. Right, right. So I'm like, is it a, is it a, like, a subtle, it doesn't, he doesn't seem to fit like the type of guy that would do a subtle middle finger. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's, there's nothing subtle about anyone <laughs> in this movie. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't get that either. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't sure. Yeah, I was trying to think of someone there is subtlety to. <laughs> um, huh. Maybe the, uh, the alien that slinks out of the room at the warning of the queen, he was a little yeah, subtle. Yeah, was that, that subtle. was pretty subtle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Probably the most subtle character in the film. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, Jonesy, Jonesy is subtle. Jonesy is subtle. Yeah, yeah he's good. <laughs> It was good. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I really like it. I like I like the the sets and the action and the characters. I I like the whole thing. But I I can see what you're saying. Like you know, because the uh, things have come since then that have you know done the same thing and haven't had the '80s kind of right. atmosphere to it. So I mean, it's not like people are wearing like you know uh, '80s clothes really. But no, yeah, but, but you know, yeah. It has that sort of uh, <clears throat> 80s era look to it. But I'm, I'm really glad, though, that, like, if this movie is made now, like, the entire, like, all the eggs and, like, the egg sack and all that stuff would be digital. Yeah. And that would look super cheesy. <clears throat> the effects on this are incredibly great. Yeah. yeah. For Stan f- Winston. Yeah. yeah. That guy was a legend. Yeah. For a reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think the aliens look better in this movie than they did in the first one. Oh, yeah. Uh... Yeah, because yeah. in the first one, basically, he's usually just kind of standing there still. Right. In this one, they're like crawling around and jumping, <clears throat> and coiling, yeah. and 
They're doing all kinds of stuff, yeah, especially look, the queen. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, they look like uh, bugs, and they're all flexible. But mm-hmm. clearly, like the first one was just a dude in a suit, right? right? Tall but, dude, though. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, especially like you know, it's it's one of the scarier moments in that movie. But like the scene where uh, he gets Tom Skerritt. And he just sort of holds out his arms. Yeah. And it's like, give me a hug. Yeah, he, he just kind of freezes like, yay! Like yeah. he's posing for a vacation photo yeah. or something. <laughs> what? I just said something negative about Alien. I, I gotta go wash myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the soap's in the bathroom. Okay. Uh, you can just uh, rub it in your mouth. <laughs> okay. And yeah. now we'll take a break. Sounds good. All right. Washed my mouth out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Said the Hail Marys. <laughs> <laughs> I feel much better. It's good. It's yeah. good. Yeah. 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 So, uh, I think, uh, I think we've discovered, uh, at least between this movie 
and uh, Apocalypse Now, uh, that maybe the extended versions of movies aren't necessarily the good versions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe those studios know what they're doing sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think those directors should just shut the fuck up and sit down and do as they're told. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's very rare, actually, that I think of it, that uh, a director's cut is better than right. what is actually released. Especially for uh, a movie that is generally critically acclaimed. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, I can think of one movie, uh, Daredevil, which was not critically acclaimed, that the director's cut is actually better than the theatrical version. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> that is an interesting... Yeah. yeah, yeah. Huh. I'm trying to remember if there are any... like. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I guess they're just usually more self-indulgent, because I know I've seen two versions of Natural Born Killers. Right. And I think I really liked some of the director's cut stuff that they took out of Natural Born Killers, but probably overall it was better without, right. all, without all of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It was definitely better without all of it. Yeah. Because there was some stuff with, uh, the, like, Guardian Angel character. I forget his character's name, but... Yeah. I didn't really like that so much. I remember uh, Donnie Darko. the The director's cut is uh, not as good as the theatrical. Really, I actually like the director's cut better than that. Really, yeah. yeah. I think it's more for the music though. Like, I really like the 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 music changes in that. Uh, like at the beginning, it just seems to. I, I know. I know. He said uh, he was really looking for um, "Never Tear Us Apart," the NXS song. Right. Like that's what he thought of when he filmed it and then they ended up having to use something else um but the director's cut they did get to put that back in there and like it just seems to match up perfectly you know so i don't know maybe maybe not overall but i just remember that specific thing i liked better right so there's like maybe one or two good scenes that they're cut but the rest of it maybe overall yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, i mean people need editors yeah yeah they do yeah we sure as hell do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but if, uh, if all you people are going to leave it to me, well then guess what? I'm not doing a goddamn thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We can't afford to pay an editor. Nope. And I'm not going to sit here and take the time to actually listen to these things back. Oh, Lord, no. <laughs> I got better shit to be uh, doing. Yeah. Like enjoying my silence. Yeah. We're not poor. We don't listen to this show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so what are you going to do with your newfound silence? You um, uh, well, pretty much the same thing I've been doing, just uh, a lot less bitching. I'm just enjoying it more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. As like I said, I'll uh, I'll occasionally go to bed uh, early just because I can. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Yeah. I like it. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. So. uh I'll no longer uh, have to give the finger to the upstairs. Yeah, I've seen yeah. That you never have to leave Slayer on full blast while you leave the house. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I only saw that happen once, but yeah. it was well deserved. I uh, no longer have to uh, slam my door repeatedly to try to get them to shut up or scream at the top of my lungs or uh, take my sword out to my car with me just in case. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Forgot you had a sword. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> That's cool. Yeah, That's cool. yeah. That's Is cool. it sharp? Uh, oh yeah. Is it? Yeah, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, the only sword I ever had was my Thundercat sword, and it wasn't exactly <laughs> sharp, but it did have a button you press and the Eye of Thunder I lit up. So, nice. Uh, that would scare some people. Yeah. I kind of would like to have that sword. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, I don't think it's as, as, you know, like, proportionate to our age group now. Right. Like, when I was younger, it was probably, like, sword size for me. Right, right. When I was, like, seven or something, but it's probably it's probably more like a dagger to us. Right, yeah. Uh, I recall uh, having a, uh, a Heat Man sword. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, yeah. for kids? The power sword. Wow. Yeah. 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 And wow. it had, like, the uh, the chest plate with the, uh, the H in it. Nice. <clears throat> I never had any of that stuff. And, and the shield. Nice. Yeah. Didn't the chest plate have an iron cross? <clears throat> uh, there's some controversy about that. Uh, uh, I can't remember exactly which one it's supposed to be. Right. Yeah. I feel like the toy that I had had an iron cross. 
Yeah, uh, I can't recall. Uh, I know it had both because the Iron Cross uh, has certain meanings for, there's for certain. Neg- uh, there's some negative connotations yeah, yeah, where yeah. blonde haired dudes wearing an Iron Cross. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, anything, uh, anything going on with your life? Anything, um, uh, work's been good. Yeah. We've been super busy. Like, like we've had some really, really <coughs> excellent weeks sales wise. And on top of that, um, because of that, most likely, uh, the owner, Jack, has allowed us to get some more help. So, um, like there's been magic guys assigned to doing magic duties and, Free and me and Jeremy up to actually work in the comics. Nice. Like I was up in the attic and moving stuff around and like sorting stuff and filing stuff and pricing stuff and reordering stuff and. Sounds awesome. It was great. I was like, <laughs> I work at a comic shop again. If, <laughs> if only for today. Yeah. Kill me on my way home. You know. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's been cool. That's cool. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, but other than. Uh, and that oh, I had this weird thing happen with my eye, as you uh, can see, but yeah, uh, yeah. the listener can't. Uh, I will say though that uh, I can't actually see it. Really? Uh, like uh, you showed it to me on Friday night, mm-hmm. uh, and like you're like, "How do you like my eye?" And you showed it to me, and I didn't know what the fuck you were talking about, <laughs> and you physically had to point it out to me. Uh, okay, well yeah. that's good. Well, I mean, I've had a maybe maybe it's just like we were in a restaurant or something at the time but right. i've had so many people at work asking me uh you know like what happened to your eyes so like you know because it's like really bright in there so right. i don't know i mean it was even to the point where you know like when you get a new haircut and everybody's like hey somebody got a haircut right like yeah. it became like annoying how many people were saying something about my eye yeah i'm like i'm fine let's just move on you yeah. know <laughs> but apparently last monday i sneezed really hard and uh, ruptured a blood vessel in my eye, and after like five days of it not getting any better and actually looking worse, like yeah. on by Thursday it looked worse. Uh, I called uh, my doctor. Actually, I stopped in my doctor's office, and I was like, "Hey, I'd like to make an appointment uh, for this eye." And I just kind of like, you know, looked up in the sky so they could see how bloody right, yeah. it was. And uh, and she was like, "Oh, okay." She's like, "Well, we actually don't make appointments." She said, "We what? What you have to do is, and I and I after she said this, I remembered that this is how they do it. You have to call them at seven thirty in the morning, like the moment they open, and then you can make an appointment for that day. But they won't make any like advanced appointments, <laughs> like appointments in advance. And uh, and like if they don't have any openings that day, you just have to get up at seven thirty and call the next time. Right. And uh, which is really Weird. strange, yeah." But they are literally right across the street from my house, like, like, they're like 10 yards from my bed. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I just go to them. Um, so I called them at 7.30 in the morning Friday and they're like, yeah, come in at nine. So I just went back to sleep for an hour and then walked right over there. And, right. And basically. It's a busy street though. It is a busy I know with me with only one good eye. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, he he basically said, you know, you know, you uh, you probably sneezed, or you, you know, unless you had a a really strenuous bowel movement. And I was like, no, not that I remember. I was, I mean, I'm a vegetarian, so like, basically, an hour after I eat, it's out of it's out of my system, you know, usually. So uh, yeah, he basically just said I sneezed too hard and charged me eighty dollars to tell me so, and right. then I went home and went to work. So. He said it should go away within a week. Yeah. Have you noticed it fading at all? It, it looks a little less bad today. Uh-huh. Um, it's still there, but yeah, like it seemed like Thursday was the worst it lo- ever has looked. So. Yeah. Like I said, I couldn't tell until you physically pointed out to me twice. Yeah. So yeah. <clears throat> well, that's good. That's yeah. good. But uh, other than that, yeah, right. that's it for me. Right. Yeah. Simple times. Didn't do anything cool today or anything like that? Um, or? I, I, uh, went over to Kathleen's and then we went out to Steak and Shake for, really? for breakfast slash lunch. How, how do you, Brunch. uh, how do you, uh, how do you eat anything at Steak and Shake? Oh man, I love, I mean, 
Steak is in the name. <laughs> so is shake. <laughs> I did have a shake. Um, I, I usually just eat a big giant plate of cheese fries and some baked beans. Really? Yeah. Better. Which is what I had today. Better. I had, used to, I had steak and shake yesterday for lunch. Yeah. yeah. That's a good, that's a good place. Yeah. I love their breakfast too, but we didn't make it in time for breakfast. I've never had their breakfast. Oh man, it's good. They have these silver dollar uh, hash browns that yeah. are amazing. <laughs> Yeah, some of the best silver dollar hash browns I've ever had. But, uh, yeah, then, then we went, uh, uh, book shopping and I have price books because we were right there. Right. And then we just went back to her house and watched a couple episodes of The Critic. Yeah. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah. How's that hold up? Um, well, I hadn't seen it since it aired. Right. And when it aired, I remember thinking, like, it's watchable. Right. I never, I never loved that show. I don't. I would barely even say that I liked it, and I felt exactly the same way today. Like there was like maybe twice in the forty minutes that I was like, <laughs> you know, right. like a chuckle, but <clears throat> like I don't think it was great. But uh, at the same time, I don't think it was horrible. It right. was just like I would never like want to watch an ep- episode of The Critic, but I wouldn't mind watching an episode of The Critic there. That's pretty much been my day. How about uh, how about yourself? Uh, let's see. I uh, I, uh, I I drew some stuff uh, earlier in the day. Um, and I finished up uh, watching a show uh, called Misfits, no. which is a, a British uh, television program. Uh, it is. Uh, Basically about a group of uh, juvenile delinquents who wind up getting superpowers. Yeah. And uh, doing fucked up shit with it. Is it the misfits of science? <clears throat> no. 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 Uh, I really like it. A lot of uh, a lot of good characters. It's it's funny at times. It's it's super dark, like like pitch black dark. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there's a character who in the first season. Uh, Gains the power to sort of uh, rewind a time, hmm. and uh, there's a really excellent episode in that first season where he uses the power to sort of try to uh, uh, save somebody from going to jail from his past, and then he just fucks up time altogether. So he has to do it like three different times to get it right, and he still fucks it up at the end. Uh, so it's like a flawed hero. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, well then. Like, uh, right around the end of the, the second season, uh, they discover somebody who, uh, buys and, uh, sells powers. So they all sell their powers, uh, then they discover that they need them back. Uh, but they just also figure out that, uh, they can just buy any power that they want instead. So, uh, and, that's and, awesome. Uh, his time travel power already, you know, it gets taken, you know. Uh, but basically, like, things happen, and, and I'm usually not picky about time travel stories, like, you know, as long as the story is good. Right. But a lot of the time travel in this, uh, like, throughout all three seasons just makes me wonder, like, there's just massive holes in the plot. Right. You know, like, uh, there's, uh, an episode where basically all the characters with superpowers get outed in the press. And uh, then they become famous, but then, uh, like, some terrible shit happens uh, where they all wind up dying. Uh, and so uh, the Time Rewind guy uh, goes back in time to prevent them from ever being outed in the press uh-huh. and uh, stopping the guy who eventually does the, uh, the fucked up shit. Uh, but during the course of that, like, somebody learns some stuff in the middle of it, uh, but then after they rewind time and fix it, then that person should never have learned of the stuff that he then continues to know Ooh. after that episode. Ooh. <laughs> but it does sound like a plot hole unless it's foreshadowing, like something is wrong with the uh, hi- nope. hindsight lad's powers or whatever his name. Nope. nope. Okay. Because uh, he uh, sells his powers and uh, sells his powers to an old Jewish guy who decides to go back in time to kill Hitler. Uh <laughs> fucks that up uh, and drops his cell phone in the process so Hitler discovers cell phones <laughs> and uh, by the time he flashes back to the present day the Nazis have won the war because they uh, all of a sudden discovered technology that was decades ahead of them Ooh, oopsies Yeah. 
And so then there's like all this power transfer and stuff, and somebody winds up getting the time travel power, uh, like one of the other characters, and she goes back to, uh, stop Hitler from getting the cell phone. <laughs> Yeah, which she does, and then she, like, kicks him in the nuts a few times, and then uh, travels back to the present day, where everything is fine again. But that should still mean that she should still have that power, and she doesn't. Okay. Because yeah. the only so... reason that that whole thing happened is because she had that power. Sometimes time travel stuff is confusing. Maybe the writers actually got confused. I think they just got lazy. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or uh, yeah, it was just... Yeah, there's there's a lot of time travel plot holes in that. They should really never have tried to be so ambitious with it. I think. Right. But other than that, other than solid. that, it's it's uh, just a fun show. That sounds yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like a kind of a a good take on superheroes. I like it when there's you know a little more flaws and like problems yeah. with the powers and when it makes yeah. it more relatable. Basically, like you know the whole reoccurring theme that keeps happening throughout all the uh, the seasons is that uh, uh, they, have, they wind up killing a whole bunch of people uh, just out of uh, accidental or self-defense. Like civilians? Uh, civilians, mostly because uh, they're all like doing community service. Uh, they wind up killing all of their probation workers. <laughs> <laughs> One way or the other here. There's a zombie episode that was really good. Yeah. But it's got that kind of does it have like that kind of quirky British comedy? Type? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Okay, yeah. but it's still it's dark at the same time. Super dark. Yeah, I'll have to check it out. What channel is it on? Uh, you can for, see it on Hulu. Okay. Hulu dot com. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sweet. I believe uh, the first two seasons are available on uh, DVD. I think. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. But sometimes the library that I go to has uh, DVDs. Yeah. So I might check that out. Yeah, you can check that out. I'm sure. Uh, Sure, your lady friend. I know that uh, she is interested in seeing that. So oh, really? Uh, Netflix it or something? Netflix it or Hulu it or something? Yeah. Uh, no. Cool. Cool. That, that reminded me of a of another show. Is there another like goofy superhero show? Heroes. <laughs> That's the one. The Tick. I was thinking there was a newer one. Like, uh, is there a newer superhero show? Otherwise. Uh, Venture Brothers. I don't know what I'm thinking of. <laughs> uh, Misfits of Science. <laughs> Great American Hero. <laughs> Doctor Who. Uh, Is he a superhero? Uh, he's kind of a superhero. Is he really? Yeah. Well, he's got the time travel. He's got the time travel. But they do the time travel, right? Uh, I don't know that they do it right, but, uh, they tell such big, broad stories that really the time travel doesn't have much to do with it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and usually the people involved, uh, yeah, they're they're the consequences of what happens when they do do time travel stuff is uh, you know follows through in, in subsequent episodes. Right. So yeah, it's it's not of a not as big of a, a lapse of of detail as right. it is in uh, Misfits. Imagine. I will say my favorite thing about Misfits is uh, the opening credits. Oh, yeah, they're great. A really what? awesome song. Really? Yeah. Like the the actual credits are cool, like the Yeah. The uh yeah. Okay. Huh. Uh like uh like uh I say it uh, it replaces uh, the rescue me credits as uh, my favorite sequence. Really? Yeah. Really? That's such a great uh opening sequence, yeah. the rescue me. Kinda that's that's the song I need on my alarm clock every morning when I wake up. <laughs> I don't know who does it, but uh, shit, I can't remember the, the name of the band. Garfunkel and his front butts. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I have, uh, I have a, I have a CD, uh, alarm clock. So I've got a mixed CD that I listen to in the mornings when I wake up. Nice. Uh, the very first song is a, uh, death clock song. Nice. Uh, called Awaken. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Does, is that one of those, like, asso- association things though, that where you're starting to hate that song? No. No? Okay. No. Because I'm worried about that, like, because I don't have an alarm clock that does that, but if I did, I'm like, should I just pick something that I hate that has a fast upbeat to it? Right. Or should I pick something I like and run the risk of getting sick of it? Right, right. I will say I probably wouldn't, uh, like, go out of my way to listen to that song if I'm, you know, just tooling around or whatever. Right. Uh, but, you know, as far as waking up in the morning, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. 
Mostly it just scares the crap out of me when it starts. <laughs> Scared into uh, being awake. That's, yeah. It's kind of... Well, seems uncomfortable. For for 20-some years, I woke up to, like, you know, WTUE or, you know, <laughs> what a, a similar classic rock station. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's pretty much what I'm used to when I wake up. I leave mine between stations, so it's like a garbled mess. Uh, I can't do the noise. Yeah. Yeah, I can't do that. I mean, you can still hear, like, elements of people talking or songs, right. but it's, like, such a, like, it's impossible to sleep through because it's so annoying. Right. Yeah, I can't do that. Can't do the, uh, the alarm alarm, you know, like mm-hmm. the beep, beep, beep. Oh. Can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. I do have, uh, sometimes I'll use my phone, uh, as an alarm. Mm-hmm. Uh, which, uh, it's actually a, a Sepultura song is my alarm. Nice. Uh, Rahatmata. Yeah. Yeah. And, wow. uh, that, uh, actually is kind of a gentle awakening. Yeah. <laughs> Oddly enough. <laughs> I can see that. Just kind that. of starts out with, like, you know, tribal drum yeah. beats. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. Mine is just a soothing sound. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much all I've done today. Is watch TV and draw. draw. Man, that's the life, though. Yeah, that's that's uh, that is why I don't do a day off diary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you'll see. Mine is basically. I mean, like I told you, I'll be watching cartoons. Right, yeah. and, you know, <laughs> walking my dog. Or, I don't know. You know, I've noticed I have never included Uma. Like I walk her. The first thing I do when I wake up every day is I yeah. walk my dog. And, uh, I usually end up walking her on my days off, uh, a third time in the middle of the day. Right. And I always walk her at night. But for some reason, I've never included her in the diary. Uh, you've also never included that, uh, you took a piss. Or, yeah. That's true. Yeah. I mean, they're just some things that are just ingrained as part of your well, yeah. day. Well, you know? But I mean, but I mean, everybody doesn't have a dog. Well, no. So, but like, everybody takes a piss. You know? Yeah, but, you well, know, everybody who does have a dog walks right, their dog right. right here. Uh, I think, uh, I mean, obviously if something weird happens while you're out walking Uma, then you should probably include it. We did uh, find a Yu-Gi-Oh card when we were walking today. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I even, like, sort of bent down to look at it to see if it was one we could sell but uh, at the store, but it was, like, first of all, it was in bad condition, but second of all, <laughs> it wasn't a holographic card. Yeah. It was just a mere common. And third of all, Uma took a dump on it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, half the products in our store um, have had some sort of animal to get up on, but that's never stopped people from lapping it up. I'm talking to you, Magic customers. Uh, so, uh, yeah, why don't you uh, pick me a comic and uh, we'll call this a night. Okie dokie. Um... I'm thirty percent sure you'll veto, so I've got two in mind. All right. Um, I don't. I don't know. I'm seventy percent sure you won't veto. All right. I should say it that way. Okay. Um, I I, I realized that we've never done any manga. Yeah. We've never reviewed any Japanese comics. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not. Well, it's usually because there are uh, thirty <laughs> volumes. Yeah. Well, I, I figured we'd read the first thirty volumes. Uh, of, okay. All of, right. Of Akira this week. <laughs> no. Um, do you do realize though that if you're not picking Akira, you're going to make two people very upset. <laughs> John Bobash? Yeah. And uh, Joe Grunewald. Oh really? Joe yeah. Grunewald. Well, we can't read the entirety of Akira. I have told both of them that if they want to read Akira and come here and review it, we will totally not be in the episode. Yeah. But let them host the episode oh, that'd themselves. Be cool. yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. We could use a break. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we just still have to be here, though. Yeah, I, I would have to be here. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Do well, unless they want to figure out how to record it on their own and just give me the file later. Oh, there that you would go. Be even, even better. better even yeah. Better. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Work that out amongst yourselves, guys. Yeah. So you're not picking Akira. I'm not picking Akira. No, I bought a manga. I bought this a while back, and I've been wanting to read it for a while. Yeah. Um, because I I randomly read like just a snippet of one of the volumes last year and I was like, oh, this is cool. So I wanted to start at the beginning though. Right. And so I bought the first volume of Yotsuba by, um, let me see if I can get his name right. I think it's, I think it's Kiyohiko Azumi, if I remember right. All right. Um, I wouldn't have any clue. 
Yeah. <laughs> I've never even heard of this. Oh, okay. Is there an American name for it? No, I think Yotsuba is the American uh, name. Okay. Yeah. Now, is it a self-contained first volume? It, well, yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you haven't read it yet? I haven't finished it yet. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm mostly through with it, but so far, it, it looks like it's not gonna have any sort of, like, conclusion. Con- well, no, not, not a conclusion. It's not gonna have a cliffhanger. Okay. It might be something where, like, the second volume picks up where this leaves off. Okay. But it doesn't look like something that will be like, what? At the end of it. Uh, Cause it, every time I watch a, a Japanese movie, uh, I always complain that there was no ending. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't want to complain about that. This seems different okay. from uh, from any other like anime or uh, okay. anything I've ever watched. So I, I have a feeling that yeah, it's it's like a it ends and like your it's a closure right there. Okay, All but right. then the next one picks up with the same characters right, right. and goes on. Yeah. All right, All right. Of course, now I'm curious to see what would happen if I vetoed this, but uh. <laughs> I guess you'll you'll pick that one in the future episode yeah, or something. Exactly. Yeah. All right. I guess. Uh, like again, I don't have anything against manga. Right. Uh, but yeah, except for the fact that you know most of them are volumes and volumes with the reading. I've read very little manga. I mean, I've maybe read like, like yeah, like two volumes of Akira, and then maybe like, I read I read all the Battle Angel Alitas until they did the Last Order, and I, I never read those. But right. other than those two, I've only read maybe like four mangas ever. I mean, I've just right. not read a lot of it. I've uh, I've only read a handful myself. I've read uh, I read the first two volumes of Sanctuary, okay. uh, which I really enjoyed. But it's like was, the Mafia one, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was never able to find uh, any of the the following volumes of that. Oh, damn it, we could have totally reviewed that and put the <laughs> Cavalier Conspiracy Sanctuary song in there. Yeah. Just, oh. uh, my ex used to be a big manga reader. Uh, so, like, you know, whenever I was, like, if she was sleeping or if I'd uh, take a dump or whatever, I would grab something. Yeah. And, uh, like, so I've read, like, uh, how, what was that? like Priest. Uh, okay. I read yeah. a couple of those. Uh, oh my goddess, I've read some of those. Uh, I know she had other stuff that I have, you know, probably thumbed through at least. Uh, I've never read either one of those. I have read the, uh, the Batman manga. Ooh, Child read, of Dreams. I read the Star Wars manga. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've yeah. read the manga esque Empowered. Oh, yeah, uh, Adam Warren's. Yeah. But yeah, I figured since, you know, like, probably about 50% of the comics sold in America these days are manga. We right. should, we should review one yeah. sometime. I got, uh, I got no problems with that. I know. Uh, cause, cause you kind of told me that, uh, you were thinking about picking a manga. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was talking to our friend Matt Brassfield and, uh, I was like, yeah, I think Jason's going to pick a manga like, you know, next episode or a couple episodes down the road and just automatically not, like, I didn't know what exactly you were picking. Uh, he clearly didn't know what exactly you were going to pick. Right. Uh, but he was just like, oh, manga, and he just started bitching about it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I mean, we can, I guess, I guess I can go into this more next Actually, episode, yeah, but, yeah. but yeah, I don't, I'm just usually not attracted to the, to the style. Right. To the art style. There. So. Yeah. I think my problem with it is mostly just the volume. You know, there's just too much out there. You don't know what's what. You don't know what's good. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of it does look the same. You know, so. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, let's do this. Sweet. This, this unpronounceable uh, comic that you're going to force me to read. Yotsuba, volume one. <laughs> is it, uh, translated into English? Uh huh. Yeah. Is it, uh, does it read like a normal comic or I'm going to have to read it backwards? <laughs> <laughs> Will this affect your uh, veto? No. Okay. Right, right. Yeah, it's it goes uh, right to left. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, the, so the wrong way. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, I, I hesitate to say the wrong way because uh, there's a large reading public that says it's the right way, but it, it's the opposite way that we read comics. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, yeah, well, uh, I guess, I guess I look forward to that. Yeah. All right. Something different. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay then. Uh, I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. I guess we're out of here. All right then. Goodbye. Later, kids.
You can subscribe to Gutter Trash at iTunes or directly at guttertrash.net. If you go to iTunes, please leave us a review. You can email us at eric at guttertrash.net or jason at guttertrash.net. For more info, you can find us on Facebook. Or you can go to seanborn.net or buyerbeware.guttertrash.net. Listen to our sister podcast, League Night, at league.guttertrash.net. Thank you for listening. Until next time.